Okay, we are now on example problems from section 13.2. And we have this clock that's in the shape of a square pyramid. The clock has a base of 3 inches and a height of 7 inches. Find the volume of the clock. Okay. All right, and we're going to use the volume is one-third base times height. And remember, this is the area of the base. So I'm going to use one-third, my area of my base. Well, that's a square. So I have to take three times three, which gives me nine. And the height of this, this is not a slant height. It's a height from the top to the bottom, which is just seven. So this is actually three times seven, which is 21. And when we are talking about um, volume, we will be doing inches cubed. Okay, example number two. Um, hexagon, and it's a pyramid, so a hexagonal pyramid, where you're still going to use the formula, the volume is one-third the base times the height. This is the area of the base. This is, every time you come up with one of these in class, it seems like, oh my gosh, I need help, I don't know how to do this. I think everybody knows how to do this. You just look at this and go, oh, I have to do one of these. All right, our height is no problem. Uh, the one-third is no problem. The area of the base, however, is a hexagon. Oops. Okay, we've got six sides here. I'm going to draw this aerial view of our six sides. And each side length is three. Okay. What formula is the formula for the area of a hexagon? Oh, yeah. The area is one-half AP, apothem times perimeter. So I need to find this apothem. I need to find that right there, and we do that by making a triangle. Oh, yeah. I know everybody has this moment like, oh, that takes so long. It actually doesn't. You time it, you're like, hey, I've got 360 degrees divided by six triangles. This is 60 degrees right here, which means I have, if I cut it in half, a 30, 60, 90. So there's a 30. This is a 60. This is the 90. And I have a side length of three, but I've cut that in half. So from here to here is 1.5. And then we know our 30, 60, 90 rules like pros around here. So then the long leg is square root three times the short side. So 1.5 times square root three. That's my apothem. All right, so I come back over here. I'm going to do one half my apothem. And I'm just going to leave 1.5 square root three because my calculator can do more figuring for me. And the perimeter is 3 times 6, which is 18. Okay? And then we go to our calculators. I'm grabbing mine here. Okay? 1 half times 1.5. And once again, you should be grabbing your calculator and make sure that you are getting the same answer I am. Otherwise, there could be issues that we're making mistakes on our calculators. I'm getting the area of the base to be 23.5. 3827. Okay? Now, I'm going to take that number, and probably a lot of you can do this in one step, times 23.3827 times the height, which is 14. Okay? And then put that into your calculator. And I'm getting a 109.1. And this would be centimeters cubed. One of the things to watch out for is be careful how you type in 1 divided by 3. It could be, let me check to see what I think you might do, some of you, with your calculators. Um, nope, I think you're going to be okay. So 109.1 centimeters cubed is your volume here. Example number 3, find the volume of the cone. So the volume of your cone is 1 third. Okay, and you're going to have pi r squared as your base times the height. Okay, remember it's still, it's based off of this, the one-third base times height. It's just that your base of the cone is a circle. So I've got one-third pi radius squared times the height. I don't even have to use Pythagorean theorem. How easy is this? It's just like you have all the numbers. You just need to calculate them. So I've got... All these numbers, typing them into my calculator, just like you guys are right now, and I'm getting a 314.2. Okay, 
and I'm labeling, labeling this inches cubed. This is the volume. All right, next example is example number four. <laughs> oh, there we go. We need something to be a little more challenging. We don't have a height. We don't have the radius. We just have that this is 46 degrees, and we have a slant height of 13, which we cannot use either. So what do I need? I need one third, I need a radius, and I need a height. Okay, so how am I gonna do this? Well, let's draw in our height. Let's draw in what we need. And I'm going to draw in the radius. Oh, I cut this in half. So this angle is now 23 degrees. Oh my gosh, this dotted line right here is my height. This is my radius. So I'm going to draw over here a little triangle. That's not so little. 13, 23 degrees. And how am I going to find anything else? I am going to look at this side right here. I'm going to call it X. No, I'm not. I'm going to call it R because that's what it is. All right. This is a 90 degree angle. Oh yeah, tree. You're gonna have to use, which one will it be? Sine, cosine, or tangent? I'm gonna take opposite, and this is my hypotenuse. And you can find out adjacent first if you'd rather, if you'd rather put, you know, your H over here. Let's go opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So sine of 23 degrees, because it's so katoas, S-O-H. So I have an R over 13. So I go ahead and calculate that. Make sure your calculator is set to degrees. Sine of 23 degrees times 13, because I'm going to take this times 13 to solve for R. And now I get a radius of 5.0795. Okay. Now, what does that leave me to find? I need to find my height. Now you have two choices. One is to do A squared plus, now you have your B squared the B value, so B squared equals C squared, which actually I think I'm gonna do. So I take 13 squared minus the 5.0795 squared, and that gives me 143, but I have to take the square root of that. And I am getting for my height, I'm getting an 11.9666. All right, now I gotta put all this together. Um, here we go, one third. Pi, radius, 5.0795 squared times my height, which is 11.9666. Okay, and if you put that all into your calculator, 5.0795 squared times the pi, I'm going backwards there, and then dividing by 3, I'm getting a volume of, 323.3, and then my label is inches, and since it's a volume, it will be cubed. All right, and that is lesson 13.2.